All right. Let's give it a second to get some people on here. I'm I'm just doing this for my couch because I want to watch the Yankees to maybe try to get a little bit of joy after that terrible football game that we had to witness today. Feel free. Anyone wants to join in? I'm gonna put the uh, the link to join here in the uh, in the comments. Uh, so you can hop on. It tends to work best if you've got a computer. We'd love to hear your thoughts uh, on the game, what you want to talk about. If not, throw things in the chat here, and we'll continue to go from that. But, I mean, I don't, I don't even know where you start there. I had a tweet earlier that it just felt like rock bottom today, but rock bottom keeps getting deeper and deeper for this team. It, it's just so hard to really find anything positive to take away from today. I mean, you... I, I took the first game with a bit of, you know, grain of salt there last week. They were playing a decent team in Fresno State, flying across the country for that game. You know, they hadn't played in two years. You see what you get. It, it, it's at least something to uh, to work on, uh, you know, to see what you could do today. And, and today they just didn't show up uh, at all. So you've got someone in the call, so let's just kick it off uh, right away. Hey, Josh, how you doing? Good, Jared. How you doing? Good. Thanks so much for calling. What 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 do you uh what do you think of today? I don't know, like really where to begin. Um, well, that's the thing. I, I'm just at such a loss for for where to start. Uh, you know, it's one of those things where I think there was maybe slight optimism that it was going to be better. Uh, but like right off the bat, I'm not sure if they were uninspired or whatever. But you you could see on both sides of the ball, they just they just weren't there. Um, yeah. And like I've been kind of I feel like. Kind of, I've kind of been pounding it on Twitter about you know potentially the coaching staff and stuff like that. I just don't know if like, you know, they have it in them to yeah. motivate this team to develop it. And like, I know they just extended Randy in March this year, so I don't know the specifics of the buyout that they may have with that. Um, but. Th- that I think makes things more complicated in terms of what this long term is. Yeah, the the extension part of it's tough, and I agree with you from the start. It just seemed like, I don't know. Part yeah. of me, they they won the toss and they deferred. I know a lot of teams like to defer, but part of me is like, after you, gotta, that, you get shut out against Fresno State, you're playing an FCS team in, in Holy Cross. Yeah, like why don't you just take the ball, go shove it down their throats you, and get the tackle for the game? You're, you, you're home. you got to make a statement. You might yeah. as well just try to air it out or try – I mean, you know, most teams plan their first 15 plays, throw exactly. something wacky out there, try to get a score, get momentum. But Yeah, it, just something to get things going. And then, you know, defense didn't do much that drive. They were better at times th- throughout the game, but that opening drive, they were bad. But what, what Holy Cross, you know, drive down the field, like nothing on them. No. And then it's one of those things where like, you don't want to let a bad team get confidence. And they did. And like, I just didn't yeah. feel that. I just didn't feel that like there was like any resilience with this team. Like I felt like when they were down, it was like, oh, like, are they really going to come back? Like, I just felt like there was like, no, like, there was, there was no, like that end of that half where they threw when Holy Cross had that long pass yep. to get that field goal. I, in my mind, I was like, well, that may be it. More the fact that like confidence, motivation, like what are they going to go in the, go in the locker room and do with? Like, I don't have, had, I didn't have any faith. They were going to come out and be like, you know what? We're going to go yeah. drop 20 in a row on them. Yeah. No, that, that's the thing. The sideline just looked dejected for most yeah. of the game. Like you could tell, I mean, it, it's tough. You're getting out there. You're getting beat up on by, by an FCS team, which you, you, theoretically think you're better than um you know more physical than uh and all those sort of things that go along with it but it's tough and and i know you you mentioned the coaching staff stuff i don't know i mean for me it's hard to see them at at any point try to make a change here i I think they made like a concentrated effort heading into last year knowing i feel like you you can't not play last year and then fire the coach at some point this season it's it's hard for me to see them doing that uh, i it yeah, I get that, and I know like we've seen them making a better like wave in recruiting for the class of twenty twenty two. Like we've kind of yeah. seen how they are radar and rivals, but just for me, it's just like, you know, are we gonna get what we're gonna get? Like, is there like any like you know, is yeah. I feel like older coaches like that with Randy, like, is he gonna step up his game? Like, are you know, what I'm saying I feel like it's just, like, is this what we have, and we're just hoping that we get better talent, and then it's just it is what it is. You know yeah. what I mean? Like. It's yeah, it's tough. It's um, tough, but I, I appreciate you hopping on. Uh, thanks so much for calling in. Thanks, thanks, sir. Yeah, yeah. all right. I, I see we we we've uh, 
got J Rob here on, on the line, uh, ready to come in. I, I, I know, I know you've got a lot to say. <laughs> oh, I, I can't, I can't hear you right now. Um, I don't know if you're on mute. Uh, can you hear me? Um, all right, I'm not seeing you. Uh, I'm not able to hear you on my end. So maybe if you just want to try hopping off quickly and, and logging back on. Um, I know sometimes it's a little tricky from a phone, but um, yeah, no, I, I, I think again we, we we've got a ton to talk about today. It's just it, it's a tough game. Um, you didn't see much progress, if anything, on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, they got shut out last week. At least they put up some points this week. But you you should against an FCS team. Um, but just a lot of bad plays, a, a lot of poor decision making. You know, thrown into double, triple coverage, balls getting picked. Um, it, it was just disappointing to see. And I know, again, the points on the coaching staff have been brought up on, on Twitter um, all over there. Uh, Josh was just on here, called in to talk about that. And, it, and it's just tough. Um, again, I, I think having made that decision not to play last year, I think it's really hard to then fire a coach at you know this point this year. I, I know you could say, hey, well, you had all of last year to, to work out some of these kinks and, and to get better. But, you know, at the end... <laughs> I like that big Larry. Yeah, no, no I don't know. Y'all Starburst are pretty bad. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just, what are you going to do? And if you do hit that reset button again, and bring in a new coach, I mean, how much more patience can you have? I mean, you, it, it's tough. You, you tried the young upstart route with Bob Diaco. You know, he, he was gone pretty quickly. I mean, you, you had the you know, that kind of the guy who's been around the block and Paul Pascaloni got rid of him pretty quickly. So it, it, it's tough. And, and I know you can't say how much time can you give Randy to build things. I know the recruiting classes are looking better, <laughs> but it's, it, it's tough. I just, I just don't know where this team goes from here. And, and again, kind of hear the same things after every game that, you know, they weren't able to execute. They made too many mistakes it's just tough to, tough to see as a fan and, and really try to go out there and support this program when you keep getting the same things, uh, you know, game after game, the same same mistakes kind of over and over. Um, it seems like there's just some stubbornness there again, you know, running the ball so frequently. It wasn't working. They weren't getting much. Um, Sergio just obviously didn't seem to have it much today. And, and it was tough. He was missing guys, throwing a double, triple coverage. It, it's tough. Um, all right, let's give this another try with uh, J Rob here. And hopefully, hello. Oh, there we go. There, oh, we, there go. we go. We there got we you. Go. All right, yeah. everyone tune in now. Now's when the fun starts. So, uh, <laughs> so what, 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 what do you think today? Um, I gotta say this, man. The writing, the writing has been on the wall, the writing has been on the wall, and I just feel like in 2019, in 2018, when we tried to tell, you know, the fans about what about what we thought of the program and where it was headed. You know, we got a lot of flack for that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I get it. And I want to say one thing to, like, the fans that are listening. You guys are not absolved because I don't get it. You got new hopes. You want things to change. But ultimately, the writing has always been on the wall. And and I, pre I think we got some good talent. I definitely think the whole idea that we got to recruit better players is, is a must because you look through the – the uh, the recruiting sheets got kids from Florida, Texas, all over yeah. the map. So you, so they really went and tried to extend their reach across the uh, of the collegiate plane. However, football is a game of coaching. Yeah, it's about leadership, and at the end of the day, it does not seem like anything has changed. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't really seem like anything has evolved. Anything has gotten better. It looks like everything every year has just kind of got a little bit a little bit more progressively worse. Yeah. Um, turnovers. You can't block. Still can't stop anybody. Um, and then you look back and you you look at the whole move to get rid of Diaco, and you know there's a definitely a a cult of Diaco fans who are always going to defend him, myself included, because we knew the type of guy he was. And you look back and like I said on Twitter, Diaco's not losing the Holy Cross. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know. Like I saw someone put out there. You know. It was Paul Pasqualoni and Randy Edsel are the, the last two coaches in the past, I think, 10 years to lose to an FCS school. The only one right. who hasn't, who didn't lose to an FCS school was Bob Diaco. So as, as much as people want to give him black on some things, you, you can at least say he didn't lose to an FCS school. 
I mean, it doesn't get any more embarrassed than this, man. And to be honest, like, you got to play Yale. And right. when is, when is, it, it, to be honest, Yale is, I, I think, a step up from Holy Cross as well. Like I if, agree. Like, if, if the Ivies could compete in the FCS playoffs, like, Yale would be a contender to, to compete and really, I, really make a good, good, you know, move there. I 1,000% I agree. And the sad part is we're going to look at this now and, like, when is the last time Yale has been able to say they may be the best team in Connecticut? Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's 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 tough. Um, and and again, I, I think you know you kind of say the writing's been on the wall with, with the way and, and things just haven't evolved. And I think you see that across the board. I'm curious from your perspective as a player who played in these FBS FCS games, like going into it, like from a fan's perspective and just like someone who watches the sport, you you just assume that these FBS players, you know, are at least more athletic. They're they're more physical than these FCS players. And today, you just see like the offensive line just getting wrecked yeah. by, by these players on Holy Cross. And it's like, what's going on here? Like, th- like they're, they're, I'm not sure where the gap has come that there's such a, there's really no discrepancy really between a UConn and an FCS team out there today. I mean, I've heard rumors about UConn going down, back down to FCS. I don't really think, I don't think that'll happen. But I mean, realistically, how do we compete? You know, and I've played at the FBS and I've played at the FCS level, I've played at both. And I will say, I've I've played with a few guys at the FCS level that are also pros, and some of them are playing on Sundays right now. So there's guys everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I just feel like with UConn, we don't have the luxury to look at an FCS school and just write them off as like yeah. an easy win compared to another school like like a UCF or an SMU. You know, they can look at a schedule and they'll see a Holy Cross, and yes, they may check that game off, but they know they're going to win the game. Yeah. I don't think at any point did I come, did I feel, and maybe you yourself didn't watch the game and felt like, oh yeah, this is a wash. Yeah, we are going to blow them out. This is a, like I, I've been in games as a player at UConn, and most of our FCF games only been decided by a touchdown or ten points yeah. max. Sometimes yeah. maybe even three. So it's not yeah. like we are out here running, running through FCF schools to make us look like to even really be surprised about the outcome of this game. Yeah, no, I mean. The only reason why I had it was just like pure homerism and like, you know, cautious optimism that like, hey, like they had the year off, like they did, they worked out, like, you know, got a better grasp of things. Like, you know, a lot of young guys are playing, like time to step up and like this first game at home, you haven't played there in, in over a year. Like this is the time to like step up and like show that yeah. this is a new team. And I think that was the most disappointing thing to me is that like yeah. you, you go in there and you're like, the fans are at, at a level right now where like, I don't even think UConn needs to go win like eight games. Like no one's asking for that. Like go no. out there this year and like go win three or four games and like four games, you know, right? It seems like it's a step in the right direction. Like the the, the baseline is just so low right now. Like the bar, is, the way it's been set. Like just go out and do the bare minimums and, and yeah, fly back in. Like you know, it, today it was just like it was sad to see the rent. You know, pretty empty. Yeah, like, I mean. You never want to see an FCS team like celebrate on your field either, and it's it's, it's just tough to see. And it's like, yeah. I, I mean, I think the biggest issue for me, the defense did look a bit better today. Like they still let up, yeah. they still let up some big plays. Like that's been the Achilles heel for them the past couple. Yeah. Of years, just letting up some big plays. I mean, there's one where like, you know, Holy Cross is like pinned back. You know, they started the drive at the two, mm-hmm. and, and the quarterback like spins out and goes for 75 yards. Like, right. With him, so like. Like you can live with a couple of big plays, like, but the offense does nothing. Like it's run the yeah. ball every time. Um, you know, like I, I, I get they they don't want to ruin you know the quarterback's confidence and everything and yank in mid game, but I feel like at some point like something's got to give and you got to just like switch it up. I mean, I don't. I agree. I mean, ultimately, I think Jack. I, I will say I think Jack is talented. I, I yeah. really do. Yeah. I think yeah. he has a talented arm, but at the end of the day quarterback the position of quarterback is really decided by wins and losses yeah at the realistically i mean if you even look through history i mean even jalen hurts was pulled for Tua Tagovailoa. you know what yeah. i'm saying like it is about wins and losses and you can have all the talent in the world but if it doesn't if it's not looking like it's translating on the field and it just doesn't work and ultimately this has been the problem i feel like for uconn for the last maybe six seven years like yeah. We've been a team that could play some defense, can't really score against anybody. We shoot ourselves in the foot a lot. And, I mean, it doesn't look like anything is changing. And what really is mind-boggling for me is you had an entire year to completely 
develop all your young talent, all your new talent. You had a whole year to do it. You didn't have a game. Everybody could stay healthy. Yeah. And the product is just, I don't like what, 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 what was going on. And, you know, I hate this whole, like, you know, going against like, you know, making it sound like I hate Randy S. So I have a big problem against because ironically enough, Jared, like from that staff, my biggest ally, the only coach that I still talk to from the staff to this day is Corey. Yeah. Corey Edsel. Like, me and him are really yeah. tight. So it's like, I always feel bad about this, but at the same time, I'm not, I have to also defend my teammates, like the Kevin Murphys of the world, the Connor Freeborns, yeah. the Bryce McAllisters, all those guys who kind of got shipped out and made to seem like they're the reason that we weren't successful. Like, I'm going to ride for those guys any day. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. I, I saw a tweet earlier where someone's like, give Brandy like an athletic department role and, and let Corey take over at this point. Like, I agree. Like, <laughs> I do it. Let Corey run the ship. I would like, love to see Corey at that position. I mean, like he's killing it on the recruiting trail. Like he, he owns social media. Like he, he clearly like ha has it in him. And I mean, like, you know, it comes from the background where, where he's, you know, done it. But I mean, the part that's just like so hard for me to stomach is like, the way they're trying to run the offense just isn't the way anyone runs an offense in college football anymore. Like it's, it's not, it's not like power football and just run it. And, you know, I mean, who I mean, do we think we are to do that? Like, who do we think we are to run that style of offense? Right. It, exactly. I mean, like you saw what this program was able to do when you had a guy like Rhett at, at mm -hmm. offense coordinator, um, you know, who like really tried to revolutionize things a little bit and like yeah. all moved a bit. Like even if the results weren't there, at least, you know, there was some excitement to it. Like, you can see, like that's the direction at least that the football should be going in. I mean, yeah, you've got an offensive coordinator who, like, no offense to him, was like an old line coach like yeah. years ago, and, and now is you know calling the plays or whatever he's doing. Yeah. Like, it, it's tough. It's tough to see that. No, nah, it is, and and ultimately, man, when when is when are we going to really start to hold Benedict responsible? But actually, before I even get to Benedict, I do want to say this also about Corey. I think Corey could step into that role because Corey understands players. He's a young guy. He is this age's type of quarterback. I mean, type of coach. Like, yeah. I will say the one thing that I remember about my time from the Diaco regime to the new one is like, yeah, Bob Diaco for sure had us travel in suit and tie and khakis. That that definitely happened. But also, I watched Diaco dancing to Lil Uzi in the locker room with us after we won games. You know what I'm saying? Like, he... He's yeah. trying to look for the players. I don't feel like they have somebody at the top now that is trying to, you know, resonate with your players, somebody to get behind to play for. Like, I just feel like sometimes you got to yeah. want to play for your coach. And I don't even know if these guys really want to play for him. It, but I do I'm, think Corey could do that. I, I'm curious to get your perspective, like having played, like you go out your first game back in like two years, you get crushed at Fresno. Then you come out and you lose to Holy Cross. It's like, what, what, what's the morale and like the mindset like? heading into the rest of the season. It's like, in some ways, it feels like the season's done before it even got started. I mean, imagine being a fifth or sixth year senior and yeah. you stayed and this is what you got to go through. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, it's hard. Because at the end of the day, for guys that, you know, some guys have been there since like 2017, since I've been there. So yeah. when they're there now, it's like, here we go again. You know, yeah. like I've been here for four or five years with this hope that something is going to change. Things are going to be better. Yeah. And... It's, it's, it just hasn't gone that way. And I, and I look back and I, and I really feel like in 2016, in 2000, 2015, 2016, that season where we went, we played Marshall in that bowl game, that should have yeah. been like the cornerstone season to turn the program around. Right, yeah, yeah. And we completely dropped the ball with that. Like, you got to remember, we were riding some pretty high momentum. We knocked yeah. off Houston. Yeah. Uh, we played everybody tight. We had a top 25 defense in every statistical category. And instead of building on that, we completely have only gotten worse. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, no, it, it's interesting. Um, yeah. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see where, where things go from here and, and just yeah. see what they can do. I mean, the, the schedule only gets tougher. For worse. Me. I mean, it's worse. Like, I mean, you, you got Clemson in November and it's like, oh, geez. Like, I, I really don't understand. Like, I'm going to be honest. Like, we might be the first. We could get mercy ruled. <laughs> I, I don't understand. I just don't, and I, I'm not trying to be funny, but it's like, how are we supposed to compete with a team like Clemson? And we can't even click on all cylinders against, uh, against Holy Cross. And then, you know, we were a 28 point underdog to Fresno yeah. state. 
Yeah. And I'm gonna be honest, as a, as a as a degenerate who sports gambles every once in a while, like I hammered that plus twenty eight and a half because I was under this impression. Yeah. I'm like I, I'm like I don't not I don't feel like they're gonna beat us by twenty nine. I feel like we've we had a year to prepare. Yeah, Everything's yeah. looking up. The recruitings look good. Like I had this blind faith in us, and it's like they ripped my heart out against Fresno, and then holy. Yeah, are you there? Yep. Oh, can you hear me? Uh, I can't. I think we might have lost you for a second there. But yeah, no, I, I get the point you were saying about uh, about for the Fresno in, in twenty eight and a half, and then you look and you see Fresno is a twenty point under or twenty point underdog to uh, to Oregon today. So if you know you think UConn was twenty eight and a half point underdog uh, against Fresno, so twenty eight and a half point underdog Fresno, Fresno's twenty point underdog against uh, Oregon today. I mean, setting up like UConn be a fifty plus point underdog against Clemson. I, I think we can't can't hear you. Uh, Hello. There we go. You hear me? Yeah, we got you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I just feel like yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna open up at like a forty four and a half, maybe higher yeah. than that. It could be higher than that. I yeah, mean, yeah. I guess I guess you have to you have to see like what they are come uh, come November because who knows? I mean, th th there are games like looking at the schedule. They they've got some chances like. If if you want to try to be optimistic and say like, yeah. hey, maybe they could pick off a game here or there. Like, you got UMass who has like been at UConn type level the past few years. We might lose to we, we might lose to UMass. Yeah, um, I mean, it, who who knows? Like, I feel like going to play Army is always kind of a crapshoot the way they they run that triple option. If you can, I mean, they like, just they just they were underdogs today and just beat yeah. Georgia State. Yeah. Um, Middle Tennessee is kind of down in that range too. So, so who knows what what these games look like? I mean, it, it's hard to be optimistic after you lose by ten to Holy Cross at home. Um, that, that's yeah. kind of that's kind of the bottom line here, and and it's sad because there there was so much optimism and hope heading into this season. Again, having that year off. I mean, when I had Coach Edsel on the podcast, he was really adamant about how like he felt that this program was turning around, like that the players were starting to take some more control over the program, and like have that buy-in and to me i'm just struggling to see that right now i mean at the end of the day i mean he, he runs the program i don't know what it's like now but he runs the program like um like he just i'm gonna be honest he runs the program like he's won a national championship like you would think he's won a national championship um i mean i remember you know guys were having to do like these 6 a.m morning sled pulls um at like six in the morning where you had to pull a sled and if somebody was late it was like it was definitely before the – I remember how the NCAA installed those rules with, like, hours with players. Yeah. Definitely illegal. Definitely probably shouldn't have rocked out. But, yeah. you know, when you run in a program like that, it's hard for players to get behind it. Like, kids – this is not the 90s. This is not the 80s, not the early 2000s. Like, kids these days are not responding to that. Yeah. They're just not yeah. going to. Um, And ultimately, I don't know how Benedict stomachs this because yeah. – like, like, what's that conversation going to be like? Like, when is yeah, and when is Benedict going to ever be put? When is he ever going to be put in a position to be held accountable for? You know, I don't think he cares really about the state of that program. Mm. I definitely think his heart lies in basketball and other ventures, but I don't think I don't really think he cares about the overall success of UConn football. That's just me being as transparent as possible. Because when you get Bob Diaco and Rhett Lashley and you don't allow that to even happen. Yeah. And then, you know, you get a new coach and then he just – he fires coaches along the staff along the way and they go to other places. But you're not looking at the person at the top. You're yeah. just getting rid of a defensive coordinator, getting rid of a defensive backs coach. You do this and that. But you're not looking at who's at the head of the ship, you know, so. Yeah. No, I, I, I think it, it was – the whole you know premise behind bringing Coach Edsel back, I, I thought was interesting, and like trying to see what you could do, like if you could bring back those you know glory days there, and see if you could build it back to, to what it was. I mean, it clearly just it, it isn't really working out to to what it should be, and, and it, what. Yeah. It, um, I actually thought the move to Independence was good for them. So like I, I, I will, yeah, me too. I will give Benedict a lot of credit on that move there. Um, 
you know, protecting basketball in, in those sports there, but yeah. also, also for football. I mean, and now, now especially as you're seeing the whole college conference landscape change too. And yeah, you know, I mean, the AAC now would have been even more of a mishmash if UConn was left in there. Um, I agree. And you're and you're really looking at some trouble. And the way the way it's built too, I think, you know, an independent schedule gives you those opportunities to win. Um, you know, be competitive. You know, compete against those schools like Syracuse, like BC, like that, that you yeah. want to you know be at that level with. And it's uh, you know, it's it's just tough to see. Let's uh, I'll, I'll keep you on here for a second. Let's just yeah, see. no worries. We've got someone else here. Um, can you hear us? Oh, all right, he's gone. Um, <laughs> but no, it's it, it's it's really going to be interesting to see how this plays out and what mm-hmm. the rest of the season looks like. I mean, it, I mean. It, it's tough to have much optimism coming out of today. I mean, my thing is this: does does Edsel make it through the season if this goes on? Yeah, like, I think that's. That, I think that has to become the conversation. Like how, and and for all we know, Jared, th- this thing could bounce back. You know, I'm not. Yeah. We can't. We can't yeah. say that this is no, what it's no, going no. to be. But yeah. but I will say this though, and just to comment on one thing you said because you talked about UConn's glory days. Yeah, and I will say this. And this is like by the fans, and I've said this on my podcast, is just like our glory days were like seven wins, eight yeah. wins. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it's not like we were some dominant force in the big news no, back no. in the day. Because yeah. we really were not. Yeah. No. So I, I think whenever when we brought him back, it was like this idea that like he's going to bring the Yukon black back to like this 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 astute glory of yeah, that never really that it like blindly existed because I mean the highest we got to that Fiesta Bowl and we know how much of a mismatch that was. So, you know, we can't keep looking at those Motor City Bowl wins and stuff like that as like yeah. the glory of UConn. You know, people want to see people look at schools like UCF and Boise State and like they want to win like that. You know, they want to compete every year for a conference title, playing a New Year's Six Bowl. That's what that's what you dream about. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, if they made the Motor City Bowl, like, you know, I, I think there'd be a parade at this point, basically. It might. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, everyone rings, whatever. Would, I mean, make the Motor City Bowl and everyone would be jumping for joy. Yeah. Like, I mean, again, like, I and, and I get the point that, you know, going back to the glory years is, you know, eight, nine wins. And I mean, I I, I don't think UConn's, you know, one of those schools that's ever going to be at a level where you're competing yeah. for you know, a national championship. So you take eight wins and, and yeah. that would be a, a really successful year for you, especially, you know, if you're an independent now where you've got yeah. some high games on the, on the schedule. Um, you know, if you could, to be honest, just like put a competitive product on the field right now. That's what all fans want to see. That's all. That's really more than anybody wants to see. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, too, is like all the old players, we're all still like fans of the team. Like we want yeah. them to all win. I think that's what people don't even fail to realize that like we want to see UConn win. Yeah, I mean, I mean, no one's ex- no one's asking to go out there and be competitive with Clemson. Like that's that's, <laughs> like, that's not what we want. Like we'll take the million dollar paycheck and like yeah. the day and like do what we have to do. I mean, you know, get some ESPN time or whatever. And like, right, of course. Yeah, get the get the experience and exposure playing against them. It's a cool game, fun game for fans to go on a road right. trip. Or what? But like, you know, game like today, like beat Holy Cross by twenty plus. Like, I mean, like the spread was only I think seven, man. Yeah, it was two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah, I, I mean, it, and I, I see someone in the comments here saying like we merely want to see improvement, and like yeah, that that's what it is. Like you have to four or five wins this year, and like people would have been happy. Like that was the right. bar. Like. Um, like it, it, it's sad to see that they just are like constantly becoming kind of a, a punching bag. Like when you look at like the national writers out there and, and see what they have to say about like about college football, it's it's making fun of them, and uh, that, that's all they've been the past couple of years. I mean, they just gave them more fodder today when they when they go out and lose. To, I mean, we are going to be scheduled as most teams' homecomings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just that's just the reality of it, man. And, it's, it's it's disappointing, you know. It is, it is disappointing because you, you look at other teams and you look at other programs that have gotten better, like Lu- yeah. the Louisiana's, Indiana teams that have been like at the bottom of their conference. Kentucky, they're all figuring out ways to be competitive in their conferences. Yeah, and it's just like, how come all these other programs that are not gonna always get five, four yeah. or five star recruits figuring yeah. out how to be win ten wins, get eight wins, be competitive in their conference, not be Right. You know, so it's, I mean, it, 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 to me, it feels like if the offense was designed like most 
college football offenses are right now. You could go pluck a kid off the streets of like pretty much any southern city right now that you yeah. know could, could step in at quarterback and sling it and you know open things up a bit. But you know, this the style they play, it's it, it's tough. Like, I mean I mean, but my thing is this, I don't feel like we utilize enough like option game. We don't spread yeah. the balls not spread out mm-hmm. enough enough. Like the read option was created, like for people who just are fans but don't really know, like the read option was created because of your aligned inability to block. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like you have it, the read option was created as a way to cope with that deficiency on your offensive line. And we don't do enough. Like there's no RP, I don't think there's enough RPO. I don't think there's enough like no like the no huddle should be utilized yeah. way there's, more. There's no play action. Like no. it, it, it's just run it up the middle. Like uh you know the playbook is remedial. Play. The playbook is just straight up remedial. Yeah. It, and I'm curious from having played defense at this level, how tough is it like when your offense isn't doing anything and it's not mm-hmm. like it's just like a, an outlier game here or there, but it's like mm-hmm. you're just on the field most of the game and like yeah. I mean, I think that just lends itself to opening up those big play opportunities yeah. where it's like you, you need a breather at some point. And it's just like it's it's dejecting. I have to feel like when it's like we've got to do everything during this game. And because like if, if we don't stop them here, like how are we going to make up those points? Right. It's demoralizing. It's really demoralizing because, you know, you got to you got to remember, like it is it is hard to win college football games. So every moment in a game is major. Like you get a, you get a three and out, you get a stop. That's a win. You know, you don't want to come back. This is no disrespect to like Holy Cross or any of those teams. Like they they went out there and like, they they beat them. Like it wasn't like they like lucked into this by any means. Like, yeah, no, I agree. Like, and the the thing that actually kind of scares me too is like, I remember when we played Villanova, I think it was my true freshman year. This is when they had John Robertson. Was he that was the one a, won by three? Yeah, I think we won by three, but that's because they had John. John Robertson was up for like the FCS version of the Heisman. Yeah, that the Villanova team I think would would beat us by twenty one plus. Yeah, I'm not being honest. Like that team was pretty good. Even though we only won by three, because but that team was one of the better team, like one of the top ten teams in the FCS at the time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's the thing. Holy Cross isn't a, a top tier FCS team. They're either. not. They're not. You know they made the playoff last year, but it was a short and weird season. Season, like, right? And then they went and got crushed by the two seed there. So um, yeah, you know, so it, it, it's tough. But I guess it's just, I mean, n- nothing else to do at this point. But let's go out there and just, just see what happens. Like, I mean, I definitely do feel like it is time to try to. It's, 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 it's definitely time that, you know, if Dave Benedict is going to be representing UConn Athletics, he needs to look at that program in the mirror, face it head on, and make the decisions that are right for not only those kids, but just, like, what college kid does not want to go to a football game? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like, are you kidding me? Like, how are you out of any kid that is at a Division One a program between the tailgate – the party, the game yeah. itself. Like, it it doesn't even matter that the game's not on campus. Like, who, who doesn't want to go out there? Like, like, like the, the fact that nobody, like, that students don't care to go to the game. Yeah. Like, that yeah. is, that is ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've, especially, I, I've definitely seen the rent with, like, fans. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, especially coming off this year when, like, most of these students, like, probably weren't on campus, couldn't do anything. It's like, right. Who doesn't want to get out there and go to like the first game of the year? Like, I don't blame them. Like, I don't blame them either. No, I don't blame them either. But I look at Virginia Tech enter Sandman, yeah. and I get goosebumps looking at it. Yeah, and we can't get anything remotely close because students are just—they're just as much over it as you and I are, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, no, it, it, it's it's tough. So I guess uh, we, we'll see what happens against Purdue next. Yeah, week. yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, Purdue's coming to town. That's a lot of old staff. That's uh. Anthony yeah. Poindexter's on that staff. I think Bob Diaco was on that staff. Not that he got he they let him go last year at the end. Oh, okay, of the oh, okay, yeah. okay. Um, but yeah, otherwise so yeah, that game was set up for a lot of intrigue. Yeah, I would say I would have been really, really loud tuned into that game. But um, Jerry, I appreciate you having me on the stream, yeah. man. I just uh, absolutely, yeah, no, I'm just I, as frustrated as you are, I'm just yeah, as frustrated yeah. as you are, man. Yeah, no. Well, th- thanks for hopping on. Yeah, appreciate no it. doubt. All right. us. Yeah, thanks. We'll talk later. Yeah, so th- thanks everyone for joining us. Really interesting to get his his uh, J Rob's opinions there. Uh, 
you know, just hearing from a, a former player's perspective and, and what it's like. So who knows? Uh, we'll see what goes on against Purdue next week. Uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Everyone uh, hang in there. Have a good long weekend. Uh, go enjoy yourselves after that one. Uh, and we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll probably be back out here next week. So thanks so much, everyone, for hopping on and participating.